next, a special Halloween episode of Dr. Frank and Joe's Gruesome Picture Show on WLQL TV 
an artist. Where are John, Joe, Jake, Jim, Jerk? Dead, dead, dead. They were not born before they were born. They were not born. Where are Leonardo, Rembrandt, Ludwig? Alive, alive, alive. They were born. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil. To nourish the artist. Stretch their skins upon an easel to give him canvas. Crush their bones into a paste that he might mold them. Let them die. And by their miserable deaths become the clay within his hands. That he might form an ashtray or an ark. For all that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are blind fish swimming in the cave of aloneness. Swim on, you maudlin, muddling, maddened fools. And dream that one bright and sunny night, some artist will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. Bite hard and die. In his stomach, you are very close to immortality. Walter, what are you doing there? I was looking at Carla's picture. Why, I pay you to look at pictures? Oh, get to work. I was just looking. There are empty cups all over the place. Clear them out. You shouldn't be so rough on him, Warner. Hey, say, Walter. All right. There you go, cut. Yes, man. How you make it? Fine, man. How about you? In and out. Valdez Vice. Yeah, LaCroix checking in. Lou took over a couple of minutes ago. Anything new at the door? Well, nothing you can pound nails in. A couple of hustlers. One of them short, fat, brunette, named Skinny. The other one was short also. She was bleached and skinny. Name of fat. Probably. They didn't get it. They didn't give any pictures, though. Guess you can keep an eye on them. Okay. Any heads? Well, Jerry Sachs looked like he was straight. I'm sure he's on it anyway. Didn't see any pushes around the place. Lou said he'd check out on Jerry. He'll sound him out later if he gets any higher. I guess it's about it. Okay, uh, go on home and get a good night's sleep, you think. Okay, so long. Everyone listen to my new poem. Do you think they really heard it? I heard it, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Walter. I'm sure you did. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. That was word for word. Yes, it? I've forgotten. You mean you don't remember your own poem? I refuse to say anything twice. Repetition is death. I don't get it. When you repeat something, you are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only in new impressions, new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a... I do believe that, Walter, but I also believe creative living. To be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave. Or in the army. They tried to draft me once. I couldn't pass the test. <laughs> Walter, Leonard's looking at you. He's just about gone. Walter has a clear mind. One day something will enter it, feel lonely, and leave again. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Yes, cats, yes. If you want to know how beatniks live, William and me will show you. We'll introduce you to some wild ones. <laughs> You may even discover an artist of your own. 
And how much is that going to cost us? What cost? A couple of bucks. You want to meet some beatniks, don't you? Oh, no, it's the artist. I'm just crazy about artists. All that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are just blind fish swimming in a cave of aloneness. Oh, you must be an artist. And working as a busboy, too. Feed him that he will be satisfied. The artist is. All others are not. That's most intriguing. Are you a painter? Well, well no, I, I work... Uh, I'm working on something that's not ready yet. What is it, man? Finger painting? Uh, draw me a picture of a house, Walter. Make some smoke coming out of the chimney. Well, I am working on something. I'll show you soon. Walter? Is he? Did you get a good look, kid? What'd you have to eat tonight? I had a salami sandwich, Mrs. Swicker. Oh, if you were my son, why don't you let me fix you a nice bowl of soup? Won't take but a minute. Well, it's okay. I, I can fix myself something. Besides, I got something important to do. Oh, oh, say, Walter, did you see anything of Frankie tonight when you went out? I didn't see him at all. But, well, if you do, tell him I got a nice, fresh piece of halibut for him. Tell him that? I mean, do you think he'll understand? He's only a cat. Oh, good night, Walter. This is a canvas or a painting. A rock is a rock or a statue. A sound is a sound or it's music.
Oh, what's the matter, Frankie? How'd you get yourself stuck in a wall? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll get you out. Give you to her in the morning. Repetition is death, Frankie. Hey, man, did you guys dig that far out beatnik poetry, man? I used to do that in the 60s until the health department shut down our local jazz coffee house. Oh, in fact, I got one of my hip poems on my official crazy science uh, clipboard right here. Let's see, it goes like this. Cantaloupe, man, cantaloupe. What a tasty fruit. Who made that fruit, man? The man don't know. You don't know. Who knows, man? Man walks into a bar. He says, ouch, ouch, man, ouch. Take off, man. Blast off to the moon, man. Which moon, though? The moon made of cheese or the moon made of cheeks? I don't know, man. <laughs> that was called two cantaloupes. <laughs> anyway, what about that weird Walter guy? That man's a cat murderer. I'm, I mean, I guess he didn't do it on purpose or anything, but still, but how in the heck is he gonna explain that big hole in the wall to his landlady? I'm sorry, Mrs. Landlady, but I was trying to get your cat out of the wall and I accidentally tore a big hole in it. What is that, your cat? Oh, he told me he was going to live upstate on a big farm and that you'll never see him again. Sorry. <laughs> and that, what the heck was that? What, oh, that's right, it's trick or treat tonight. Gosh darn it, now I gotta host this show by myself and then I gotta deal with these trick-or-treater rascals coming to my door all night. This is really annoying. Well, at least I, oh yeah, I still got this bucket full of treats right here for him. So I bet you can't, I bet you can't guess what kind of treats are in this bucket because of tonight's movie is called Bucket of Blood, but there's no blood in here. It's just full of roofing nails that I had left over when my carpenter monster built my screened-in porch out on the ramparts. Well, we're gonna have to take a break right now anyway, so I'm gonna go take care of these little scamps out by the door, and we'll be right back uh, for more of Bucket of Blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm coming, jeez. Let them die, and by their miserable deaths become the clay within his hands that he might form an ashtray or an ark. Pray that you might be his diadem, gold, glory, paint, clay, that he might take you in his magic hands and wring from your marrow wonders. Where are John, Joe, Jim, Jerk? Ah. 
Bye, Carla. Well, I brought something. I think you'll like it. Take that stuff to the laundry, Matt Walter. Huh? Don't mind him. What have you got? It's a thing I made. Laundry. You like it? What's he got? Oh, come look at this, Leonard. Well, where'd you get that? Auction? I made it. You made that? I said I did, didn't I? Very good. Honest? Honest. What's it called? Dead Cat? Dead Cat? That's its name? Sure. Well, it sure looks dead enough. You you want to buy it? Buy it? That thing? Scare people out of the place. Don't be silly. It's tremendous. Look at the detail. The anatomy is perfect. Look at the expression on its face. How come you put a knife into it? I didn't mean to. Just got carried away, huh? Well, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it in the corner of the alcove. If it sells, we'll split 50-50, okay? Sure. Does this mean I'm an artist? Maybe so. You can do other things as well. well all that is comes through the eye of the artist. Yeah, you're a real artist now. I go in back and scrub down those garbage cans. Much now. You really like it? We like it. Now go on. <laughs> Did you see my cat? What's the matter? You losing? How do you like my cat? You make this thing mad? Uh-huh. It's crazy. A phrase. You wanna buy it? For me, Matt? I'm tapped. He likes my cat. Get to work. And congratulations, man. Walter, you're famous. I saw your cat. Did you like it, Mr. Brock? You may call me Maxwell. Now, how'd you do it, Walter? Oh, I just took some clay and fixed it up. <laughs> Attention. Attention, everyone. As you pass through these yellow portals, I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure. And assume this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. And indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. He is none other than Walter Paisley, our very own busboy, whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustrations. Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. Within the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. Bring me an espresso, Walter. Hey, Maxwell, really beautiful. Thank you. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it was yes, wonderful. Yes, and the cat cut. Yes. This is my man. Yes, yes. Listen, man, you got a pen? Huh? This is my man. Hey, Pops, what's happening? Making a big scene for Walter. Who'd he shoot? He made a cat. Out of clay. See you around. Yeah, later. Did you hear them, Mr. DeSantis? They all like my cat. Yeah, very good. Now look, Walter, you must be tired. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Huh? No, I don't no, 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 you got it coming. Besides, you're creating an incident. When people are applauding, they don't order coffee. So go on home and work on something. Make another cat. Well, I haven't got another cat. Well, just go to the movies. Please, Walter, go. All right, Mr. DeSantis. Good night. Good night, Walter.
Walter? Walter, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Naolia. Walter, I dug it. My cat? It was the most wonderful, wildest, like, wickiest thing I've ever seen. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. I have? Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. You've got a hot light bulb glowing inside of you, and I want to be warmed by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Walter, take me away from here. Take me away to some cool blue place and gas me. I can't. I gotta go home. Oh, then I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Swicked wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? I don't think so, Naolia. Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. I want to give you something. Something that'll make you remember me. Put it in your pocket. Now go, Walter. Don't look back. Just go. Mr. Paisley? Why, certainly, my good woman. Everybody likes my cat. You want to buy my statue, mister? Ten thousand dollars? Okay. Gee, I'll be famous. And then I can ask Carla and she'll say yes. I know she will. down the yellow door plenty. Come on in. Uh, I was just making some pancakes. You can have some if you like. Did you see my cat? Yeah, I saw your cat. I also saw that chick lay these on you. Oh, that was Naolia. She's a nice girl. She's kind of strange, though. I guess she figures I get headaches or something. Okay, Walter, who's your connection? Connection? Yeah, connection. Who do you score from? Where do you buy your horse? Horse? Horse, junk, white stuff, heroin. Is that what that is? i never seen any of that before. I always thought that was expensive. Yeah, Walter, that can be real expensive. Gee, well, wasn't that nice in Naolia to give me that expensive horse? Walter. Huh? Police officer. Oh, you're like an undercover man. You're under arrest, Walter. Under arrest for what? Possession of narcotics. For me? What are you talking about? Walter, I got you cold. Now, you just come along quietly. I didn't do nothing. And they only had give me those. I didn't ask her for it. Oh, I didn't even know what was in there. All right, that. you can tell them that downtown. Now, let's go. I ain't going no place with you. Walter, do I have to point this at you? You're going to shoot me. No, D -d don't shoot Walter, me. Walter, just relax. No, you're going to shoot me. Now, just relax. No, don't shoot just me. shut up, Walter. No, you're going to shoot me. Don't shoot. <laughs>
noise, Mrs. Swicket? What noise? Don't tell me I didn't hear a racket. Are you sure you're all alone? I I'm always alone, Mrs. Swicket. Uh, Walter, have you been talking to yourself again? Well, I, I guess maybe I have, Mrs. Swicket. Somebody's got to. Walter, you know, what you need is a girl. But she doesn't have to be pretty. Just so long as she takes good care of you. Well, I can take real good care of myself, Mrs. Swicket. Yeah, I can see that. Look at this pad. It's terrible. When did you ever clean it up? And when did you change these sheets last? They look like they're alive. Uh, Mrs. And, Swicket, uh, I gotta meet some friends in a little while, well, and I gotta take a shower. Well, well, you know, why so don't you clean up you this stuff? Oh, well, please, What's Mrs. The Swicket. But if you'd have shot me, you'd be mopping up my blood now. I can't help it if I got scared and hit you. I didn't mean it. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know you had it in you, Walter. How'd you do it? Well, I just took some clay and fixed it up. Go home and make something, Walter. Make another cat. But I haven't got another cat. Hey! <laughs> Looks like that weirdo Walter is a real artist after all. And good thing he didn't let that cat go to waste. You know, he's he you know, he's a man after my own heart, taking dead things and making other things out of them. Yeah, he's probably got a little Ed Gein in there too. <laughs> but hey, at least that crazy bearded freak beat poet guy likes him now. And that one lady's got the hots for him too. But then she gave him some heroin. Heroin? What kind of a present is that? for a beat artist that works at a jazz coffee house. When I worked at our town's jazz coffee house, all I wanted was some dang decaf sanka so I could get to sleep at night when I got home. And then that dumb heroine almost got him in trouble with the fuzz. <laughs> that preppy guy hanging out at the beat coffee house, who couldn't have seen he was a cop from a mile away? <laughs> but you know what? A little whack of the frying pan took care of that. <laughs> Oh, geez. oh, geez, it looks like I got some more kids by the castle entrance. Okay, we gotta go to another commercial break anyway, so I guess just hold on, and I'll be right back, and we'll be right back with more of Bucket of Blood. <laughs> no matter what kind of protection you choose, or what day of the month it is, <laughs> Sunday night at 7 on WLQL TV 63. Hey, welcome back to Dr. Frank and Joe's Gruesome Picture Show. Hey everyone, welcome back from those commercials. And what the heck? It's a stupid trick-or-treater. How did you get through my pork cutlet? And oh, it's you, Betsy the Race. What do you want? No, he's not here. He ran out on me tonight. A letter? Well, I guess you better give it to me then. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him whenever that dolt comes back. All right, see you later. All right, everyone, looks like we got a fan letter to read here, and let's see, it says it's, oh, that's, okay, it says it's from Mikey Brown, and he says, Dear Dr. Frankenjoel, well, you know, I know it's just an accident, but hey, you got it right, Mikey, even though you got it wrong, because you probably expected that stupid monster to be here, but I'm here instead, so you're actually right. All right, um, anyway, let's see, his Mikey, uh, my name is Mikey, and I liked it when you showed Citizen Kane. It was scary. I tell you what, Mikey, I don't know if Citizen Kane is really that scary, but let's see, it says, um, I liked it when the big bird hollered real loud, and I was scared when he went nuts and broke up the room. Um, I also like the sled on fire. I like your show. Can you show another monster movie with a mole in it? Mole people, with mole people in it, Mikey Brown. Okay, 
Well, sorry, Mikey, but um, I don't know. I'll have to check and see if there are any more more people movies we could show. But um, to be honest, um, I had never seen Citizen Kane before, and we were under a crunch to um, get a movie to show that night. So I just I stuck the tape on for, and watched the first five minutes, and I saw a big spooky castle and heard some spooky music, and I saw a guy die, and I thought, ooh, this is gonna be a scary movie for tonight. But um, it turns out. Uh, it's not that scary um, for the show. Uh, so, oh, here, this is a drawing that Mike did. And it's, oh, he must have really liked Citizen Kane because he put my hosting monster into Citizen Kane. And he wrote Rose Blood. <laughs> That's a good one, Mikey, Rose Blood. <laughs> well, Thanks for writing in, Mikey. I'll make sure that this drawing gets put up on the wall in the dungeon with all the rest of the drawings. And um, I think we got to get back to the movie now, so I got to tune this thing again. And it's a little... Okay, there we go. <laughs> I got to get used to that. <laughs> well, I reported in here around midnight. Lou had already been gone over an hour. No, nobody seems to know where he went. Why don't you put an alert out on him, and I'll check on him from here. Okay, right. criminal type. Ain't you, Walter? I'm sorry, Mr. DeSantis. Oh, that's all right, Walter. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Greetings, man. Uh, I'm not supposed to sit with the customers. We? Now, why shouldn't you sit at the table, Walter? After all, you're a big artist now. A true creator above mere mortals. That's the big idea. Idea? I was just telling Walter the truth. Man wanted to pay me $100 for the cat. In fact, he's taking it home to show to his wife. Proves that I underestimated Walter's ability. His work has enormous realism. You can hardly tell it from the real thing. Boy, that sounds like a real put down. Get off Walter's back, Leonard. Why oh, I had his back. They're not very funny. I'm not trying to be. Walter, what are you gonna make next? A dog, maybe. Or a bird. How about a few dozen cockroaches from your room? Hey, man, why don't you make an elephant? I, I got a new one. Great. What is it? It's a full-length life-size figure. Crazy. What is it called? Uh, murdered man. When do we get to see it? Oh, anytime. 
Hey, that's a pretty far out name for a statue. I saw a statue once. It was called the third time Phyllis saw me, she exploded. Well, what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. It was made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. Very wild. <coughs> What's wrong, Leonard? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's the food in this dump. Oh, man, you should try the sorrel sewer. They got wheat germ bagels. Too much. Excuse me, please. I think he really is sick. So who isn't? Sanders! Well, I've been trying to get to you all evening. You gotta make a call. Gotta call Lieutenant Valdez. Listen, I was wrong about my wife. She wants that cat after all. Do you hear me? I'll give you that hundred dollars for the cat. I can't talk to you just now. All right, then, two hundred. No. No. Three hundred dollars and that's top. Three hundred dollars for the cat? <laughs> I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. And this boy, Walter Paisley, has got it. I want to buy his first work. And to make very sure that I get it, I'll pay you five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for the cat and a first look at his next stuff. Someone has the cat just now, but I'll have him back in a few days. Then you can have it for the five hundred dollars. Oh, thank you, sir. I think I've made a bargain. Call me when you're ready. Good night. Walk behind, and Feel better? Listen, I'm going over to Walter's later after the place closes to see Murdered Man. You feel up to coming along? The rope was fixed around his neck and a washer behind his ear. And the prison bell was tolling, but Tim Evans didn't hear. Saying, go down, you murderer, go down. It's not really that big. I got it on kind of a stand. Well, let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I, I never did a person before. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. It's hot in here. You want me to open a window? Oh, come on, Walter. Take off the sheet. Don't you like it? Walter, it's a masterpiece. I've never seen anything like it before. And I hope I never see anything like it again. Neither do I. It's hideous, and it's eloquent. It expresses modern man and all his self-pity. How did you ever find that in yourself, Walter? Well, it, it wasn't easy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've never seen anyone so squeamish. What's your opinion, Leonard? Don't ask me. Oh, come on. Now, even you must see its value. Do you think that you or I could have conceived of such a thing, much less executed it? Well, then admit it. It's a work of genius. I admit it. Then let's take it down to the yellow door. No. Why not? I'll tell you. But you, you cover it up again, please, huh? Please. Thank you. What is all this nonsense? Why do you want to hide it? Well, I've been thinking. I, I, I didn't realize how much talent Waller actually had. It would be wrong to show his pieces one at a time. Dead wrong. You're right. He should build a collection first. Yeah. That's the idea. Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No. Well, not exactly. I mean, you, you take years and years. It's getting hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues. But your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to gain recognition. All the big art critics and art dealers will be there. It'll be an event. Yes, then we can unload. We can sell this stuff for a lot more. But 
Uh, the show. Uh, how soon can we go? Well, don't rush things. It takes time. But first of all, you've got to stop making these horrible statues. Carla and I will guide you. Maybe you can turn to freeform. Freeform? Well, that's the movement today. With his talent for realism? But you can see the direction his realism takes. It's unhealthy. But, but you said I was a genius. I, I don't want to be a busboy anymore. Yes. Maybe you got a point there. You shouldn't keep working at the yellow door. Look, I'm sure that man is going to buy your dead cat. So here, here's your fee in advance. Fifty dollars. And if you need more, I've got it, so don't worry. I've got great faith in you, Walter. <laughs> Gee, fifty dollars for something I made. Now you're a professional. Let's go. Okay. Good night, Walter. Keep up the good work. Yeah, but don't rush things. You got all the time in the world. Come on, Carla. Good night. You are, Walter? I'm an artist, Mrs. Swicker. Yeah. Oh, sure you are, Walter. I am. Look. Hey, everyone. Turns out that beatnik cowboy guy, he's also a cop. And he's looking for his partner, the preppy cop guy. <laughs> Sorry, fella. Looks like you ain't gonna find him unless you come to Weirdo Walter's art show. Man, those narcs sure can be tricky. And then Walter's dumb beret-wearing boss, he finds out that Walter's cat sculpture has a real dead cat in it. And then they go see his new sculpture, and he knows it's got a dead guy in that one, and he still ain't calling no cops. He just wants Walter to make more sculptures so they can bring him to his coffee house and sell him for money. What a creep. Anyway, we had a dead guy at our coffee house once. <laughs> That's not why we got shut down by the health department, though. It was the constantly leaking toilets that filled up the basement with sewage, and then we had a pill bug infestation in the kitchen. No, our dead guy was just some dummy who moused off to Tony Square Toes Moretti. Tony got a life sentence up in the clink for that one. Looks like Walter is really getting into his artwork, which we know what that means. He's gonna kill a bunch more people. I hope he doesn't kill that nice girl from the coffee house or his nice landlady. <sighs> Maybe he should kill that guy with the Civil War hat on. I wouldn't mind seeing that guy take it. <sighs> well, we got another commercial break to go to, but we'll be back with more a Bucket of Blood. <laughs> Water's cold, gotta get a spool in beer. Hey, welcome back to Dr. Frank and Joe's Gruesome Picture Show. One of the greatest advances in modern poetry is the elimination of cleric. I am proud to say my poetry is only understood by that minority which is aware. Aware of what? Why not of anything stupid, just aware? Man, this place is beginning to feel like a lineup. Yeah, baby. If it don't cool out pretty soon, I'm gonna haunt somebody else's joint. We may have to start drinking. <laughs> yes, man, yes! Yes! That's my man. Yes! Good evening, Paula. Sylvia, didn't you see me wave my Zen stick? Oh, it's Walter Paisley. And bring me a cappuccino and a piece of papaya cheesecake and, and a bottle of Yugoslavian white wine. Yes, sir, Mr. Paisley. Good evening, Walter. Maxwell, how have you been? I see the rewards of achievement have come your way. Well, after all, I'm a successful sculptor now. Indeed. Hey, man, dig Walter the Wigger. He's coming out like he just cured cats. Let us make the scene. Crazy. I was just suggesting to Walter that he try his hand at freeform. Why do you suggest anything to Walter? Are you the spokesman for society come to put your stifling finger in his eye? Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, now, who invited these two down from the clouds? Maxwell, yoo-hoo! Clear the table, bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Comes to spread cheer and color. Look at my sun hat, everybody. Do we have to? 
Where have you been, Alice? I went up to Big Sur to look for Henry Miller. You didn't find him, I hope. No, he's in Europe. Good. Why is the bus boy sitting here? I'm not the bus boy anymore. That's right. Walter has become a sculptor. Oh, really? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Walter's gonna try free form. There you go again. I may take my business to the sorrel sewer. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death theme. He really should, Walter. You know what? If you like, I'll be your model for free. I couldn't. Not you. Man, if you're gonna be an artist, you've gotta do nudes. Nudes. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody an artist unless he does no. Will you get them out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change the subject. I'm sick of hearing about sculpture. Nobody knows how to do that anymore. Much less the busboy from the yellow door. Who, who do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Walter. You're just a simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. That's all, man. Let's split. Yeah, man. I gotta make me some air. See, you, you made them leave. What did I do? The first beneficial service of your benighted life. It proves we're all good for something. Are you saying that this best boy is better than I? Yes. I think this whole bit about him being a sculptor is just a big put on for my benefit. That's not true. I am a sculptor. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> that isn't a real hand. If you were a sculptor, you'd create something for me. A harpoon would be very nice. I'm going home. Alice? You're obnoxious. But he's such an idiot. <laughs> I wanted to apologize for being nasty to you this evening. So you're apologize. Good night. Listen, Torp, why don't you get out of here and let me go to bed? I didn't finish talking to you. I decided to make that female figure after all. Oh? And I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my price? $25 an hour. If you want to pay it, I don't mind posing. When do you want to start work? Tonight. You mean right now? Uh-huh. Wait till I get my sweater. You'll get used to it. Well, I'm almost ready. Here. Sit in this chair and I'll pose you. Very much clay. 
boy, it's enough. Put this around your neck. Hot. Are these fertile eggs? Are these eggs fertile? Naturally. What you fry them in? Uh, we ran out of the safflower seed oil, but I found a bottle of peanut oil on the shelf. Don't worry, it's not hydrogenated. Is that the cold pressed stuff or the junk Hilda bought by mistake? <laughs> yes, man, yes. Hi. Good morning, Walter. Hi, Walter. What brings you here? I have some breakfast, man. What are you having? And soy and wheat germ pancakes, organic guava nectar, calcium lactate and tomato juice, and garbanzo omelets sprinkled with smoked yeast. Join us? No, thanks. Mm. Sounds great, though. Mm. Uh, I brought something to show you. Could I have some of the guys help me? Is it better, oh, man? It's better. Come on. Orders. Put it in the middle of the room. When did you do this, Walter? Well, last night. It doesn't take me very long. I should say not. Well, let's see it, man. I'm honored to know this man. Do you think it's nice? Hey, she's beautiful. Do you think it's nice in a murdered man? Oh, I don't know, Walter. It's impossible to choose. They're both great. Walter, I'm deeply moved. Show my appreciation. I'm going to give a party tonight at the Yellow Door. In your honor. And I shall compose a poem. Yeah, yeah. Where, where? There, there. That's fine. Man, let's have another little kiss. Walter, you're a wretch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go get your dad. We'll see how he handled my army of freakish undead monsters. <laughs> oh, sorry, everyone. I had some more trick-or-treaters to take care of there. I showed them. <laughs> Anyways. There's that new snooty girl showed up, and I guess she finally got her wish to model for Walter. <laughs> In the bad way, I bet. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, Terrence, we're not going to get in trouble uh, for showing that part where she kind of got naked. No? It was a little scintillating. I know it wasn't that bad. You sure? Okay. Anyway, he strangled that girl and made a statue out of her. I know she was kind of mean, but I don't think she deserved that. You know, this movie's not that scary for Halloween. No, I mean, I remember it being scarier when I was younger, but it's just kind of goofy, isn't it? With all these dumb beatniks and stuff. I, ho I sure hope I wasn't that dumb when I was a beatnik. Well, why, did why didn't we get like a scarier movie? Like I was a teenage werewolf or Night of the Living Dead or something. What? Shut up. No, it's not. Night of the Living Dead's not expensive. It's free, dummy. We've shown it like seven times. Yeah, I'm, yeah. No, I don't care. They could sit through it again. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, smart guy? Well, just for that, next week, we're showing Night of the Living Dead. No, we are. No. No, I, I don't care. I don't care if he's scared of it. He's just going to have to deal with it. Stop being, tell him to stop being a scaredy pants. Oh, sorry, Joe. I mean, but Joe, don't be so scary, scaredy cat. <laughs> no, I know it's cheap and it's free because we should, no, we have shown it. No, not the one in the mall, you dummy. It's the black and white one in the house. Jeez. Anyways, all the beatniks love Walter now and they threw him a big party. <laughs> well, guess what? 
since it's Halloween, I think we should have a party of our own. And I'm going to celebrate with this fancy science drink. What's that? No, this science drink doesn't do anything special. It just reinforces my madness. Mmm. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. I call this one the green monster. <laughs> Oh man, I can feel the madness replenishing right now. Anyways, um, we have to go to another commercial, but we'll be back after this with more of, yeah, bucket of blood. <laughs> I'm a Good. We talked with two men. Hey, welcome back to Dr. Frank and Joe's gruesome picture show. The bird that flies now pays later through the nose of amidextrous apathy. Necrophiles may dance upon the placemats in an orgy of togetherness. The highway of life cuts sharply through the shady ghettos and the ivy-covered tombs. And laughter rings from every time capsule in the star-spangled firmament. And in the deep freeze it is the children's hour. And no one knows that Duncan is murdered. And no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. Duncan knows. Tuesday Sunrise knows. Alley cats and garbage cans and steaming pavements and you and I and the nude descending the staircase and all such things with souls we know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gongs, strike silken cymbals, play leathern flutes, the cats and cans and you and I and all such things with souls. We shall hear Walter Paisley is born and the souls become flesh. Walter Paisley is born. <laughs> Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Man, like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. Crazy, what did he say? Didn't you hear him? No, man, I'm too far out. <laughs> Maxwell, that was magnificent. I feel so elegant. Walter deserved every word of it. it makes me so glad I'm aware. <sighs> did you hear what he said? Yes, Walter. All about me. It's true, isn't it? Every word. You better hold off on the bubbly, Artis. Yeah, why? You might talk too much. <laughs> what would I say? Most anything I expect. Are you two trying to ignore the rest of us? Oh, not me, Maxwell. I wouldn't ignore you. I know what it is to be ignored. Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make the most wonderful, wildest, wickiest things you've ever seen. I'm going to make big statues and little statues, tall statues and short statues. I'm going to make statues of nobodies and statues of famous people, statues of actors and, and poets and people who sell things on television and a statue of the mayor, and some opera singers and their intimate friends. And everybody will say, Walter, let me shake your hand. It's been a real pleasure to have known you. <laughs> Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells. Beat cotton gowns, strike silken cymbals, play leather flutes. <laughs> Tell us what you're gonna do next, Walter. I'm gonna make big statues, little statues, movie stars and poets, and guys who sell things on television. And the mayor and some opera singers. What you're gonna do next, Walter? What am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? 
I got to do something before they forget. I know what it's like to be ignored. Your hope of bumming a ride on the omnibus survive. Huh? What'd you say? What well, is not creation is graham crackers. Let them all crumble to feed the creator. Now, oh, bait it. You must be nuts. Just wait till you see this. Extra, extra, horrible murder in furniture factory. Read about the man who got cut in half. Extra, extra. Police can only find part of it. Leonard. What's the matter, Leonard? You made a bust. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? What's the matter, Leonard? Put it down, Walter, please. Walter. Walter, listen to me carefully. I don't want you to make any more statues. Do you understand? No more statues. Well, why not? I, I gotta make statues, Leonard. You heard Brock. They want me to make them. If I stop making them, I'll, I'll just be a busboy again. Brock, he's behind all of this with his stupid, bitter poetry. Listen, you've got to stop him right away. I'm beginning to feel responsible. Why? What did you do? Never mind. Walter, I've decided to have that show for you right away. Yes. When Carla comes, we'll have her work up some nice invitations. We'll have them printed up. We'll invite the critics and the art collectors. We'll tell them. Well, I don't see why we can't go. Mr. Leonard DeSantis is afraid to have you come. You who buy his coffee to lure his tourists. You are the heart and soul and meat of the yellow door. He slighted you. Did you get an invitation? I did not. But I'm going anyway. Not to drink his champagne, but to see Walter's triumph. After that, we go no more. Hi, Maxwell. I won't say good luck, Walter. Why not? It would imply you could not succeed on your ability alone. You look so handsome. I do. So do you. I mean, you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Are you ready? Oh, we've got plenty of time. I know, but I, I wanted to talk to you. Okay. We can go now if you like. Bye. Later, man. Later. Swing. Man, why do you suppose Walter wants to get her alone? You suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. Maxwell gave him a bottle of wheat germ oil once. Maybe he just started taking it. What did you want to talk to me about, Walter? Well, uh, what kind of people do you like, Carla? Oh, thinking people. Artistic people, I guess. You think I'm artistic? Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did. I can't how you kissed me the other night. Oh, that was for your sculptor of the girl. You're nude in the chair. Carla, uh, uh, I, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone, because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I just... What are you trying to say? Carla? I, I, I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married. To you. How long?
long have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Walter, I do like you. And I did kiss you. But that was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. You mean you don't love me? I'm afraid that's what I mean. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry, but You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now, calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and... And then, maybe when the show's over, we can talk about it. Well, tomorrow. I don't want to talk about it. I get it. I see the whole thing now. Nobody knows that Walter Paisley is born. Carla. Will you do one favor for me? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. Okay. Tonight. I'll make a statue of you tonight. Okay? Well, that beatnik party sure was happening, but then Walter got himself all blotto and he went stumbling in some lumber yard or something. And then he cut some guy's head off and made it into a sculpture. I bet that guy was just there working overtime trying to feed his family or something. And then he asked that Carla girl to marry him and she turned him down. Hey, Walter, man, don't get married. That ain't the life for no beatnik artist getting all tied down by the man's rules, man. Live your life free. Well, actually, don't do that either, man. <laughs> Turn yourself into the cops, man. You're a killer, man. <laughs> man, I gotta stop saying man. Anyway, did you hear how he asked Carla to model for him? That means he's gonna kill her. What? I know they know that, man. I'm just trying to come up with something to say about this movie. It's kind of hard. Anyway, I guess we got one more commercial break, and then you stay tuned because then we're gonna get the dramatic conclusion to a bucket of blood. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I know. W-L-Q-L, TV 63. Do some picture show. Come on. We have many artists about, but no craftsmen. This man knows his anatomy. I'd give 1500 for this. After you read my review, it'll probably cost you 5000 <laughs> So what's the trouble? Why should you be so depressed? Have you heard the things they're saying? You can make 25000 on these pieces alone. I thought you put money down. I do, but 25000 Leave me alone. Come to make this scene. Want some cappuccino, man? We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get out. Uh, that art is a bum, man. And yeah, he's sober. Yeah, well, that's his problem. All right, man. All right, we'll wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside.
a body inside that statue. Oh, well, that's Alice. It's all right, Carla. Maxwell says it's all right. Let them become clay in his hands that he might mold them. Walter, you stay away from me. Don't you see, Carla? I made them immortal. Don't you see? I can do the same for you. Chasing Carla down the street.
suppose he would have called it Hanging Man. His greatest work. Oh, everyone, that was a big finale, wasn't it? Well, Carla and everyone else at the coffee house, they all found out that Walter had dead bodies in his sculptures. And then he chased Carla for a little bit, but then he started to freak out and hear all the voices of the people that he killed in his head. So he went home and hung himself. The end. This movie was directed by Roger Corman. He directed some of my other favorite movies like War of the Satellites and uh, X, the Man with the X-Ray Eyes and Ski Troop Attack. <laughs> but you know what's really bugging me now? This movie's called Bucket of Blood, and we didn't see one single bucket full of blood in the entire movie. Come on, Roger. That's a little disappointing. You're, you're kind of thinking a little low there, naming your movie something just to get people to go see it. And then you don't even give them what you, what you offer, and all you got to do is throw some stuff in a bucket that looks kind of like blood. I mean, the closest we got to a bucket of blood in this movie was when he had that cop, like, up in the ceiling somehow, and he was dripping blood, and he caught it in a little cooking kettle. I mean, this movie's called Bucket of Blood, not Cooking Kettle with a couple of drops of blood in it. But don't worry, Roger. I still love you, man. I love Ski Troop Attack so much. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, but I hope everyone had a good time tonight watching Bucket of Blood for our special Halloween episode. I sure had fun watching it after all these years. We're still going to be on tomorrow night in our regular time slot, though, but it's going to be a repeat. But I hope you come back anyways and have fun with watching a good movie with me. Now, if only my dumb monster would finally come back home, then I could kill him and go, bed, go to bed for the night. I'm pretty tired after that fun movie. All right, good night, everyone. See you next time. trick-or-treating where are you hey oh man did I miss the show again oh, he's gonna kill me a bunch of times for this one dr. Frank and Joe hey man I'll share some of my candy with you WLQL TV 